It's Kai FM 95.9. Welcome to Into the Weekend. Today we're joined by Howard Mnisi, rugby player, Lions Centre. Howard, thank you so much for coming through. Right, thanks for having me. A lot of people, including myself, didn't know this one. I assumed you're from the Eastern Cape and you're not from the Eastern Cape. Where are you from? No, I'm actually from uh, Elukwatini, a small town in Bumalanga. Yeah, um, the, yeah, <laughs> Lukwatin. You yeah. get some Swati, so yeah, I'm Swati. So um, uh, a lot of people assume that I was from Eastern Cape because I went to NMMU um, in the Eastern Cape, and obviously there's a lot of Nisis, Kosa Nisis, and people just assume that I was Kosa, but I'm um, actually from Lukwatin. I actually got, you know, a lot of flack for that for a couple, a couple of times from my home boys. How does a, a kid from Mpumalanga um, decide to play rugby? Especially black kids. Yeah. No, for me, uh, it's been a tough road. Um, used to be a basketball player, I'm more of a cricket player as well. Um, went to you know a township school where there was no rugby at all until I moved to Standerton to, to stay with my aunt, and I got into, I went to a school that actually played rugby, and that's when I got introduced to a sport in grade ten, I think. Oh. So, so high school you started. High school playing. I started playing rugby and. Um, Funny enough, in the same year, I made uh, that uh, under-16 uh, provincial side, and that's where it all started, and I just found a passion for it, and obviously because I wanted to study as well, and rugby was probably going to be one of the things that gave me, you know, um, the opportunity to go study at varsity and, and push my career even further. And then obviously, you at school now, um, you, you stand at uh, learning rugby. Talk to us about the change, the moving environments into a, a new area. Obviously, I'm assuming the culture is different. Yeah. It's now a rugby school versus a soccer school. How are you dealing with all of that? Um, for me, it was, it was pretty simple. I just had to make a decision. Um, just associate yourself with the right people, associate with people who have been playing the sport, who understand and have a passion for it. And then you just feed off those guys. And uh, yeah, I just started watching more rugby on television as well. And yeah, it was obviously in the beginning it's a bit tough because my skill set's very different from the guys who started at age nine. Sure. You know, um, I was more of uh, still flinging the ball around because <laughs> I'm a basketball player, you know. And <laughs> so everything was more offload orientated. But I believe, you know, the skills that I took from basketball in terms of my footwork and my vision and all those things um, actually helped me in, 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 in playing rugby. You know? So yeah, I think it was beneficial for me to start as late as I did. That's off ramp there because you're talking basketball now and, and uh, you're picking a lot of interest. I mean, I also played a bit of b-ball. Where did you play basketball? Well, I just played for my, um, well, played provincially like on an 18 engine, um, played that. Um, but I was still young, I was like 15, 16 when I played that. Position? And, um, point guard. <laughs> point guard. I was, so you I was, got the skills? Yeah, I got the skills. <laughs> I tried, I tried. Um, but then as I grew, I became more of a, of a two guard um, as I grew taller and stuff. So. Nice. Let's go back to Mpumalanga. Um, is it true they say a lot of guys in Mpumalanga growing up there have a Mpumalanga Black Aces tattoo? <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, no, well, I'm like, yeah, I grew up there, but uh, no, I didn't, I didn't actually. So no Black Aces tattoo. Have you got okay. tattoos? I've got only one, yeah, on my chest. Um, oh. Yeah. But and it's, it's not a spade? No, 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 it's not a spade. <laughs> it just means success is a habit in, in Latin, so yeah. Oh, what's that on your chest? No, that's the one that says success is added. The one on your chest? Yeah, the one on my chest. That's the only one I've got. Piercings? No, nothing. Because you know our host, Thomas, yeah. um, big on piercings, especially tongue rings. No, I couldn't take that out. I'm, funny enough, I, I've got a few of needles. I don't know how I went through this, but uh, yeah, I don't really take needles too well. So you're but, adding on those? Um, hopefully not soon. Um, I'm not really a tattoo guy, but this meant a lot to me at the stage, you know, what I was going through, um, and it just helped me to remind myself um, of, uh, you know, what it's my, it's my motto in life. If success is a habit, then, you know, you just take a you know, step at a time. So that was that and no tattoos. And it also just uh, it comes to the point of rugby players now, as we've seen it transform, so to speak, has changed quite a bit. You look at the kind of players are different. I mean, Ten years ago, would we have seen a dreadlock guy, tattoos, uh, it wasn't the look. Um, how are you finding the unions, and you've moved around quite a bit, embracing the different sort of cultures and the different uh, things, I suppose, that each player brings? Um, I believe rugby being such a, um, well, we just became professional, you know, just recently. 
um, there's a lot of growth that, that needed to happen. There's a lot of because now I see sport as sportainment, where you need you're not only just playing the sport, but it's entertainment as well. And um, people are more interested in your lifestyle outside or off the field as well. They're more just interested in the person um, rather than the rugby player all the time. So I think. You know, a lot of people are more open to it. You know, you get a lot of players of color who we traditionally, you know, mm. like to play in, you know, the, the vibe into into the teams and stuff like that. So, yeah, the flair and, and you know, we, we think outside the box, you know, we're not really that monotonous. So we bring a different vibe into the whole rugby rugby world. And, and obviously with the tattoos, the, the Polynesian guys, um, New Zealanders have had a lot of influence, influence into that because for them it's tradition and culture. Um, I think for some of us it's more of a um, in the moment thing where you feel like you need to you know, um, express yourself in a different manner and you just put, put on something. Who's got the most tattoos in the Lions? Um, it will have to be between Lionel and Elton. And Elton I think yeah. Elton wins that one. Is it? Yeah, Elton will win that one. All right. And then you obviously talk about the differences that people bring. Um, I'm assuming music, because music plays a big role yeah. uh, in someone's psyche. Uh, you're all getting, and I've seen obviously headphones have become a huge thing in the industry. Yeah. Was be, before yeah. the coach, I think, would blast whatever yeah. CD or tape yeah. in the bus, and you just had to suffer through whatever his a taste of music was. Um, or your taste in music, what do you listen to when you're building up towards a game? Um, I, I listen to hip hop generally uh, when, before games. Uh, sometimes house never works well. Every time I listen to house, I'm <laughs> oh, game because I get too hyped. <laughs> so that's uh, always best for me to listen to uh, some good hip hop. Um, I'm not really a fan of mainstream hip hop, so I try and listen underground. to underground. Yeah, like underground or more up and coming guys. You know, still have a message. Who are you listen to right now? You were driving on your way here. Mm, right now, is a guy this week, Mick Jenkins. Uh, from Chicago, he does music with Chance the Rapper. All right. Yeah, um, and uh, Exa Leon. Yeah, so those two guys I'm pretty fond of at the moment, yeah. Nice, and you spoke earlier of sport entertainment, yeah. which is moving that one. We're seeing a lot of guys, obviously you've, you guys are becoming brands. Yeah. Uh, what does uh, Howard have uh, in the, I suppose, in the background? Uh, as you look forward to retirement. And I'm hinting at something here, yeah. because I'm like, is there hip hop album <laughs> from Howard coming no, down? No, 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 I'm not really... No music in your bones? No, no music, uh, I can't. I'm, it's I'm very really unsweaty of you. <laughs> I, I tried it, you know, everyone goes to the period, you know, like you try to be a DJ, to, you know, or you try to be a rapper at some point and you figure out, nah, no, nah, maybe that's not my thing. But yeah, after rugby, you know, um, Obviously, like we've spoken about, I like the media um, part of things um, in terms of rugby. I would love to be part of that. And um, also, like, I've got a few things um, in the, on the pipeline. I've got a clothing line that's, uh, that's out at the moment nice. called Sign of Simon. That I Sign know. of Simon? Son of Simon. Son of Simon. Yeah, um, is that your dad's name? Where does that come from? My granddad's name. Oh, Simon. Right. So, yeah, Son of Simon, which is SOS. Yeah, so I've been working on that for, for quite a while. And then I've got some a uh, few business interests back home with my dad that uh, we've been working on logistics, uh, distribution. So those are the things that I'm focusing on at the moment. Especially now, now that I'm injured, you know, um, mm. it's always good to just to plan your your, your life after rugby because you, you know, like I we spoke about this before we end, um, that you've only got a certain number of years to, to make sure that you, you capitalize whatever you make and then you start, you know, planning your life after rugby. And that just brings me to another point. I mean, not to stereotype, but we see a lot of the times in our sport environment, our football players, after the career is done, five, six years, um, then the guys are, we hear horrible stories that broke, that bankrupt. Yeah. But less so in rugby, not saying it doesn't happen in rugby and cricket, but less so. What have rugby and cricket got right that football in this country needs to learn from? Um, I believe uh, it's more the the financial education that lacks within other sports. I know I know myself, you know, as soon as I was 19 years old, I started getting a salary. It wasn't a lot, you know, but then you start being taught budgets and the people that you hang around again, the people you associate yourself with, you know, they, they, they're like-minded in terms of they believe in saving and they believe in, um, in making sure that you secure your future instead of just living for the moment. Because you must understand, as a, as a sportsman, you live on a contract. That contract can end any time, um, 
bar injury or whatever happens at that particular time. You know, you can you could lose that contract and then you're stuck with a house you can't afford or a, a rental that you can't afford or a car that you can't afford anymore. You know, so it's very important that you you you, you kind of start associate planning. People, yeah, you align yourself with people who think uh, long term, who think savings, who think um, investments, who think. Um, business as well, you know, you don't want to be that guy, um, you know, being 35 and you're already broke and you just retired from the sport. Also, education is, a, is one of the most important things, you know, just because it gets you into the door. It doesn't mean that you're going to have a successful career wherever you're going, but it gets you into the door. So it's, more, it's, it's important to make sure that you, you study and, and you focus on those things. And I think that's the difference in terms of the financial. I know like a couple of guys now that are soccer guys that I've spoken to, it's, it's getting there where they're getting taught how to spend and plan their money, but uh, it's, they still lag a bit compared to the two sports that you mentioned before. Sure, Howard, that is uh, incredible and um, really hope that football does get there. But before we wrap it up, since we are on football, there's a big story to Derby this weekend. Um, I know rugby players do <laughs> have a favourite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, do you have any interest in the Soweto Derby? I do. I'm a Chiefs fan. Okay. Um, well, I'm a Kursi, yeah, I'm a Kursi, but uh, it's a bit tough to support the guys at the moment. But, you know, um, I still believe in the guys and hopefully they'll pull it through this weekend as well. And a lot of people are saying Chiefs are more favourites than not. Played more pre-seasons. Pirates kind of be playing that first one. You guys must be a little confident. And uh, I know the game's happening simultaneously. Yeah. Will you get to watch the Soweto Derby? Um, I'm not sure if the screens will be <laughs> available to be uh, for me to watch. But um, in, in terms of what you say, like pre-season, more pre-season games, I think, I believe, you know, the, the way sports has gone over the years, it, it doesn't really matter how many games you have under the belt. It's about, you know, the day. On the day, if you pitch up and you do the right things, you can always win the games. You know, we've seen it in rugby where the Lions predominantly never play a lot of more than two preseason games because you know how long the season is and, you know, you save the players for uh, for the time. You know, they'll always click, especially if you keep the same crop of guys for a long time. You know, I believe the Chiefs guys, even though they've had a lot of changes, uh, yeah, they're going to pose a threat for Pirates. Nice. Spoken like a sportsman, that was Howard Amisi joining us into the weekend. Howard, thank you so much for coming through. We wish you all the best for the season and hopefully everything hinges, uh, uh, heals uh, very well. All right. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. That was Howard Amisi into the weekend. Uh, we'll have someone else in this chair next week. Please do join us. Goodbye.